Hello, welcome to Young Masters, class number two or week number two for acrylic, all right? Uh, how's everybody doing? I hope you guys are all doing well. If you guys have any questions during the actual drawing process or painting process or anything, you guys are more than welcome to send us a message. There's actually a message option there. You guys just, you know, click on there. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. Just let us know and we'll be really happy to try to help you out, all right? So last time we just drew, we just used a kneaded eraser, we just uh, used a 2B pencil. Now this thing gets a little bit more fun, right? Uh, so our drawing is here, this is last week's drawing. If you guys don't have this, just go back to the previous video and you guys should be able to find this, all right? Uh, what we're using today is just a cup with water. Okay, mine is already a little dirty. Just a round brush, right here, round brush, okay? And just primary colors including a neutral which is a burnt sienna here a burnt umber will also work and titanium white when you guys get this acrylic set this is the basic uh handy art set it's actually pretty good just for home don't overthink you know which colors you guys actually need uh just get a really basic five or six color set from michael's or amazon or i mean i think even target might have these you're, they're really accessible. You can find them anywhere you guys like. Um, just make sure you guys use the the basic set. You guys don't need anything fancy. Only for the future, we might need something fancy, all right? But right now, this is good enough. We're not using any mediums, just basic information. All right, so here we go. Uh, today's session that includes color is gonna start mostly with uh, just a big washer. We're gonna use a big ground on our picture. Why are we using a big color? Well, reality does not consist of a lot of whites. So almost using white as the starting point is somewhat counterintuitive, okay? So there's no need to start with white if reality doesn't start with white. You could actually get some toned papers, but because we're using bristle paper, a heavy bristle, um, you guys, you know, it's most, they mostly come in white and you guys will definitely find it in white. We'll fix this thing in a breeze. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, here's my water. You guys can see it over here. I'm gonna move my water out of my way because it actually casts a shadow on some of my colors. So once you guys see that it's here, that's where I'm dipping my brush, all right? So I'm gonna push that away. Now I'm just gonna add water. This part should remind you a lot like watercolor class, all right? Really like watercolor class. It's very thin, not thick at all. We just want one layer. If you guys do two layers, oh boy, uh, you're gonna lose your drawing. And I don't wanna trace around my drawing because you guys will also lose your drawing that way. I just wanna make sure that I do a very, very, very thin layer of my burnt sienna. If you guys don't have burnt sienna, you guys could use burnt umber, okay? That's fine. There's no need to, to go to crazy of not finding a color. They're actually, they're both warm, it's just when it's really warm, the burn skin is really warm. The burn number is a little less warm, but it's still warm. All right, coat this little guy, coat that guy here. And after this, you guys are done. No, I'm just kidding. You guys are done with the first step, right? But not with the whole thing. This thing takes a few minutes to dry. It's gonna take about, you know, five minutes to dry. You guys could go, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are doing at home right now. I was gonna say you guys could do go do homework, but I don't know if you guys are already doing homework. Um, you guys could basically take a little five minute break, all right? You guys won't see that break on the video, but imagine I took it, all right? All right, you guys, I don't know what you guys were doing in the time off, but I was actually walking this little guy. So um, say hi. All right. So, um, so yeah, so why you actually just spend more than five minutes? You guys could just spend five minutes. If you guys have the, the, a lot of time, just, you know, spend a little bit more, just letting the paper rest. But mine is already good to go. All right. So mine's pretty dry. Probably was out like for 20 minutes. Uh, now, Still having my handy dandy paper towel over here just to dry my brush every once in a while. I'm just gonna do the brightest 
lightest color of the objects, okay? So I'm gonna start with yellow. The only reason why I'm starting with yellow is yellow is actually quite weak, all right? So if we go with all kinds of other colors and then we try to do yellow on top, it's gonna uh, probably have a hard time working. We might have to layer this with some white uh, and then go back with yellow. So the best thing to do is just go with your yellow, just a little bright. All right, here we go. Pretty much just doing my bright colors. If you guys have seen the image, you're gonna see that a lot of the colors on this picture are actually neutral colors, okay? For those neutral colors, we don't have to do much, all right? But for the, um, for the other ones, we do have to do a little bit, all right? So now I'm gonna make myself an orange. Oh, but I don't have an orange. Remember, simple rules of primary colors. You could mix your yellow and your red. You could get something that kind of looks like a really nice orange here. Again, don't make it too too wet, but you know, make sure it's a little wet. Um, ooh, that thing's on fire. So I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. Okay, there we go. So it's still orange, I just didn't want it to be so red. Right. All right, here we go, the cutie's in there. Uh, now I'm gonna make a little green, ugly green, so I don't even have to clean my brush. If it has a little red, oh, not enough red. I'm gonna add more red to it. Basically, um, those of you who don't recall, or those of you who are unaware of this, or just have never done this before, let me just fill this in and let me talk about this, okay? Oop, really muddy, really muddy. It's okay, just add a little yellow. It's still old, so I want it to be muddy. I just don't need it to be really muddy. All right. All right, so let's do a little color theory recap for those of you who are unaware, don't remember, or just, you know, whatever it is, okay? Um, so we have our three primary colors. Yellow, right here. All right, clean my brush. Red, right there. And blue. It doesn't matter where they are on the color wheel, they just have to be equally spaced, okay? Now, we know that yellow and blue gives us green, all right? So there we go, we got a green right there, a mini green. We got a green right there, okay? We know that yellow and red gives us orange. All right, here we go. Nice, all right, here we go, that's my orange. And we know that blue and red, over here, Got my pencil. We know that blue and red gives us purple or violet. Okay, the proper way is actually violet, but eh, could be purple. I don't know what terminology we actually are using at home, but that's purple, right? So what this tells us, there's these are just primaries and secondary colors. There's also ones called tertiary colors, which go in between these, but we're not gonna discuss those. Those, those we could later kind of work with, all right? So what this tells us is that colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel, blue and orange will actually give you mud, okay? If that blue and orange is mixed a little bit on the orange side, it looks brown. If it's mixed a little bit on the blue side, it's gonna look um, uh, gray, okay? So kind of the same thing, red, red over here and green over here will also give you mud and yellow and purple will also give you mud, all right? So if you guys need to make a yellow muddy and look, we don't have any black, so you guys don't wanna use black, you actually want to use purple, okay? Right now with our green stem over here, how do we make our green muddy? What's opposite of green on the color wheel? Red. So I just brought a tiny bit of red and I mix it into it. Don't add too much red because then it's just a muddy red. It's not a muddy green, all right? Always use the main color that you need a little bit more than the muddy color, all right? So here we go. Now I'm going to go into my burnt sienna. Make sure, kind of thin it down a little bit. I'm gonna cover everything again, except my lightest lights, which is really only one area, all right? 
So I'm gonna coat this again. Just go over my base again. Just this time, making it just a little more intense. So it's no longer that very simple color of the original underpainting. Now it's a little more intense. The only place I will not fill in is gonna be that little twinkle that we have here, that little highlight. All right. Let's pull that color around. Let's add it on that rooster. All right, make sure there's intensity now. Move it around, move it around. Accept that highlight there. Forget about that highlight. Or forget about not covering that highlight, okay? Um, once you guys get to this point, um, you pretty much already have the big colors that go everywhere, all right? Now, uh, when you actually look at the reference, the reference has a big gray. The big gray is the background. And we wanna use that gray because we wanna see what the difference is between this gray here, or this gray to be, and that brown over here, all right? Let's talk about the theory again. So I'm gonna mix myself blue and orange. I can make myself my own orange, but I already have my burnt sienna orange. So guess what happens when I add burnt sienna? Burnt sienna is like a uh, muddy orange. It's theoretically a brown, but a brown is in the family of the oranges. Oh boy, we have a gray, okay? See, you can make it more neutral by adding more sienna, or you can make it more blue by omitting the sienna. Oh, what did I just do? I jumped to the other side. Now it's actually a brown, all right? But I actually want it to be gently brown. Here we go. So I'm gonna use water steel. I'm not gonna be using um, uh, any thick paint or anything of that sort. It's all transparent, remember. Just like most transparent mediums, they work through layers, okay? Not rushing these things. So really quickly, just add some water and move your grays around. Even if the gray is not much darker than the brown, the goal is not to make it much darker than the brown. The goal is to make it cooler than the brown. And by cooler, I don't mean more awesome. I just mean that it's cold. All right, here we go. Fill in my spaces. This again, you guys, you guys don't have to rush, remember, I'm on a roll here. I'm just kind of like doop, 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 one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. If you're at home, you don't want to rush. You can actually take your time, all right? This doesn't have to take you guys the same amount of time as it's taken me. I've done this project in the studio with you guys. I've done it by myself. I've done it, you know, pretty much all over the place. I want to make sure that you guys are taking your time and not going at my speed necessarily, okay? If you guys go at my speed and you guys do a great job, by all means, go at my speed. Um, but if you guys are just trying to uh, do it really fast and like, all right, I'll be done with this in a second, you know, just make sure you guys take your time. Patience is a virtue. If you do things really good once, it's a lot better and a lot faster than you actually have to fix and do things good once after messing it up two or three times. All right, here we go. And I'm being really careful around my vase. I haven't been very careful outside of my vase over here because this thing has a lot of texture. It has a lot of, <coughs> of, uh, of you know, uh, little creases and folds and all that stuff. So right now I'm just working really fun. Just kind of uh, not overworking it, just you know, taking it pretty, pretty fun. Because now it's the time to get stressed out. All right, no, no, just kidding. So there's no time to really get stressed out, but now is the time that we actually have to pay attention to what we're doing. We have to be careful with what we're doing. We can be working really fast. 
for today's class, I'm going to finish this up once I actually touch the vase. But once I do the vase, that's going to be it for today's class. We're going to leave this whole area around the vase for the next session. I just want you guys to understand how to approach this thing, right? So here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to start with our darks and make our way into our lights. I'm not going to say this way, but mostly this way, okay? What we're going to do right now is clean your brush, clean your brush, make sure there's no white on your brush. And I'm going to start mixing myself a dark value, okay? The same way I just mix my black for the background, I'm going to go ahead and do that again for the vase itself. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit more blue. Usually between blues and oranges, a darker black looks more blue. A more flat black looks more orange. The darkest black though does look purple, but we're not using the darkest black, okay? So what we're gonna do here is look for the darkest areas of the picture, start your color there, and then work your way out, okay? So one of my darkest areas of the picture would be here. So I'm starting my color here. And once I start pulling this down, be very careful. And you can, you can make this color over and over again, you guys, because this is just blue and brown. There's no like any complicated formula for this color, okay? I'm gonna make it a little bit more brown too. That way it's not always too blue. Too blue will mean that it's really flat. And I don't want it to be too blue. So here as it gets further away from my core, sh uh, sorry, my cast shadow, I'm gonna start making it even more and more brown. All right, put a little color here, and I'm gonna to go to my more blue color again. This is kind of jumping around, just jumping between blues and browns, blues and browns, blues and browns, okay? I'm gonna grab more brown again, and just gonna go and mix it further down. This is not gonna be finished after this step, all right? But it is gonna give us the big light and darks that our picture needs, all right? That's important, that's important. All right, so right now we're just working on our cores and our cast shadows. I'm gonna go with my blue over here to my rooster little vase. <clears throat> Don't be too, you know, critical with this rooster. It's a rooster cast. Okay, it's actually a rooster handmade cast. So they're probably not gonna be really good looking, all right? They're not, not meant to be good looking. It's just meant to throw water out of there, all right? So don't be too critical with your little rooster. All right, figuring out big darks, figuring out big lights. The nice thing too about using different types of blacks is that some blacks look darker than other, all right? If you guys don't use different types of black, then they all pretty much just look uh, very flat and the same. But I am using different types, so mine's gonna be varied and pretty strong. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start doing these guys here, the little handle. It's gonna start it a little dark, really dark there. And then just gradually add more brown. Remember, color variation is good. If you guys wanted more control, you cannot see this, but use your brush vertically like this, okay? Um, if you want less control, use your brush flat, like I'm using it now. All right, let's go. All right, got it. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna go into this thing here, cover this up. And I don't necessarily need to do all my shadows. That shadow for the inside of the vase, that little one right there, I'm probably just overall just gonna leave it as I see it, okay? Just with the brown that it currently has. All right, and I'm gonna cast a little shadow there. A little cast shadow there. So, uh, pretty good. You know, starting to look like a vase. Now I'm gonna go in there with more burnt siennas. I'm almost gonna omit my black. It's really, really just a lot more burnt sienna. 
and I'm gonna work on some of my transitions. I just dipped it in a little water because I don't need my color to be super intense. So I could actually make it more transparent by adding water. So I'm gonna clean it here. And just once I clean it and I dab my brush, I'm just gonna move my color around. So clean, dab, move my color around. All right. go a little bright but not too bright all right on these sides too i'm gonna add a little bright right here i already have the bright there this one here i like that i'm gonna go add a little transition here for my rooster if the bird sienna is just too neutral you guys could actually mix your own orange too i think my bird sienna is just becoming too neutral i wish it had a little bit more spunk to it or more color to it there's no such thing as spunk in pink but just has more color to it all right a little transitions over here have a little green tint to it so um, uh, I actually added the orange color next to that blue color that we picked up some of that blue and orange has yellow and yellow plus blue equals green all right I'm just gonna add a little transition here just a little transition there. All right, I think you guys need to soften that away. Let's go ahead and use a little bit of water. And just move it around. All right, here we go. Use a little bit on this side. Use a little bit on this side over here too. This just has a little green to it, okay? That way it's not always boring, boring. It's yellow, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. You know, we could always um, mix colors around a little bit. All right, here we go. So now we are gonna start going into our nicer colors. So you can actually mix your orange and your bird siennas here. There's no such thing as a perfect color. You remember, that's because uh, there's a lot of midtones. That's the most important thing, that you guys are mostly working with midtones. But now I'm adding white to my color. It eventually needs to have white. If there's no white to your color, it's always gonna be the same flat thing. Little orange to it just to make it a little brighter. I'm gonna bring that in just a little bit. There you go, little orange. And I'm gonna start working my next transitions. Oops, not white enough. Here we go. Now I'm gonna start working my next transitions. So this color I like, but I only like for a little bit. Later on, I'm gonna to have to add more orange because it also looks a little boring. There's not a lot of color to it. It's mostly gray, right? So I'm gonna use this to kind of come over this thing here. I'm gonna use this to kind of fill that up. And I like it. Like I said, it's not a color that I dislike, but I do, like I said, feel that it's a little too boring. And you know, it's okay to use some boring colors, but not too many. All right, so I like that. All right, you know, pretty good. I kind of like the color, kind of like the uh, muddiness in it, All right? But that's good enough for that. I'm gonna clean my brush again. Now I'm gonna start going into my really clean colors, okay? Really bright, bright, really clean colors. So, bit of color here. All right, bit of white. Make sure your brush is pretty dry. You don't want your colors to always be transparent. Now it has to match that color that is almost on there, but I still wanna do a new color on there. Okay, it has to match this color, but I still wanna do a new color that has a little bit of brightness to it, all right? Once I find my transition, move this guy around. All right, bright enough texture these two together make sure it's not a stark transition okay so I want to make sure I dab them together this is a handmade vase so it's not it's not like it's super perfect it actually has its textures and its form all right that's it there I don't know if you guys understand but 
uh, what's coming next, but I think you guys get a feeling of what's coming next. More white, okay? So once we get to this point of the vase, it's getting there, you know, it's more interesting. It's no longer that boring of a vase. Now I'm gonna start adding more white and just a tad bit of yellow. Usually light has a color, okay? Sometimes the color of light is cold. Sometimes the color of light is warm. That depends on what you guys are using as a light source. There's cool bulbs, there's natural bulbs, there's uh, might be of modern bulbs now too, but that all depends on what you guys are using for the. Okay, so little by little, this base is much more interesting now. It has more color variation, different values, um, I would still do another layer in this gray area, but for today, once you guys get to this point and you guys just grab your pure white, you guys can actually put a little yellow to it instead. I throw yellow. There we go. Once you guys get almost your pure white, just do a twinkle right there, okay? You guys could do a little twinkle at the tip of the nose too. And I think we're gonna be pretty much all done for this step, okay? And this will take care of week number two, you guys. So if you guys, um, you know, haven't been to the studio uh, for understandable reasons, this is kind of where we ended this week. So uh, once week number two is out, uh, we're gonna start doing the new stuff, or we're gonna start doing the rest of the stuff, but that video is gonna be up on Monday, okay? So if you guys have this and nothing else, you guys are in a great spot, all right? So I say bye-bye, be safe, and uh, we'll see you guys um, hopefully soon. I won't say I'll see you guys soon, but uh, hopefully I'll see you guys sooner rather than later, and just be safe, bye-bye.